Hello, everybody. Welcome to Always Level Up, the podcast. I'm your host, Carlos Garcia. And today, we're here to talk about how my guests level up in business, relationships, knowledge, and health. And today, my guest is Darren Johnson, former musician, <laughs> um, now turned real estate business mogul. <laughs> um, Darren, welcome, man. Man, let's, let's let's dive right into it, man. Who's Darren Johnson, man? Tell, tell, let's talk about how you know your 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 level up started, man. Where where you want to start? Um, I mean, so just a brief introduction. Again, Darren, uh, the general manager of the Northwest office here in San Antonio. Uh, I've been with New Western for five and a half, six years now. Um, it's been it's been an amazing journey since I've been here. Uh, my life has changed dramatically since I've been here. Um, where do you want to begin? I mean, right. where do we start? Man, let's talk about let's talk about before real estate. Let's before you got into real estate. Uh, you know, I know you were in music, man. Yeah. And, and you know, what was uh you know what was the first you know point of your life where you you actually started to make a, a progression towards you know advancing yourself, growing, leveling up. Absolutely. So, I mean, I would say my my first point of of, of a real level up as far as getting me to where I am now is. Um, when I when I finally decided to to bet on myself is is kind of how I like to put it. Mm -hmm. um, prior to getting into real estate, I uh, I worked at USAA for five years. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we can kind of get into the story prior to that after I kind of get into this here. But it's like I worked at USAA for five years. I finally decided to grow up at one point. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll just work a corporate job. Um, I'll climb the corporate ladder. Eventually, I'll make 60 grand a year or whatever the case may be. <laughs> and I'll be well off. You know what I mean? Um, did that for five years. And then I I mean, it's not quick, but I mean, it's kind of quick. I quickly realized that climbing the corporate ladder just isn't it. Yeah. Um, it got to a point to where um, I was looked at to be the manager of of the the group that I was with, um, and what happened was is once we started having those initial conversations, I, I learned what the pay was, um, and then I realized I was making more money than the man than my manager was at the time. So I was like, how does how does that make sense for me to get a promotion, but then my 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 pay gets decreased? Like that just doesn't add up to me. Um, and then I, like that was one that was one thing that I really was like, man, I need to find something to where I'm going to get paid for the work that I put in or or for what I feel that I'm worth. You know what I mean? Um, because it's like working the corporate job. It's like you can come in full of coffee, full of energy, going going hard at, at your job, but you're still only making your 10, 12 dollars an hour or whatever your salary is. But then you look at the guy next to you, he comes in hungover or lazy or not really motivated he's still making his 10, $12 an hour, just as you are. So like, I, I realized like that just doesn't add up. That doesn't make any sense. Like I need to find something else to where again, I get paid for the work that I put in. Yeah. Um, and that's what led me into real estate. Nice. Um, was that there? Nice. Awesome. Um, uh, well, let's, uh, let's touch on the prior, prior to, prior to, <laughs> to corporate. Um, you know, I think, you know, and I know you were, you know, in, in, into music and mm -hmm. everything. And, uh, you know, how did that how did that begin? OK, um, I mean, I feel as if I mean, and I mean, I'm only 32, but I feel like I've lived a lot of different lives. Yeah. Um, so I'll kind of take it back to, to the very beginning, kind of just touch on a, a few different things. So um, elementary, my elementary career, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was a, I was an AB student. I was yeah. always in advanced classes. I was in fourth grade doing fifth grade work, fifth mm -hmm. grade doing middle school work or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, I was always in after school programs, gifted and talented, things like that. Like I was really on my school mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, then sixth grade summer came. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm free. Now, now I don't have to stay in the classroom all day now i'm older now i can move around the neighborhood a lot better my parents trust me a little <laughs> bit more freedom yeah I have, <laughs> I have that freedom now right so sixth grade summer is where my life changed dramatically mm -hmm. um i mean i hate to say it this way but i mean i started hanging well i didn't i didn't realize that in the beginning of course mm -hmm. but as i as my life progressed and as I look back, I knew I started hanging around a lot of the wrong people, mm -hmm. um, being a part of a lot of the wrong things. Um, and that sort of led me into music in a sense. Mm -hmm. So the the group of guys I, I hung out with, 
once I met them that sixth grade summer, you know, because um, now like I have access, more access to the neighborhood. Now yeah, yeah. it's not just the people on my street. Like I yeah. can bike and move around and meet new people yeah. or whatever. So that's how I met these guys. Um, and so that group of guys I hung out with, like we were the entertainment for school. Like yeah. we'd be at the lunch table rapping and doing things like that and joking around and all of those things. Yeah. Um, but we kind of just did it for fun. It wasn't really anything serious. Um, but then I also got into sports that summer. Yeah. Um, and then that progressed into high school. Mm -hmm. um, started getting deeper into doing and being around the wrong people mm -hmm. and doing the wrong things. But then we got deeper into music as well. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was also still in sports. So my thing with my the way I, I thought about it was like, look, as long as I'm doing something positive, mm -hmm. I'm, my my grades are because I mean to be in sports you mm -hmm. have to pass your classes, right? Yeah. So I was like, I'll be in sports, I'll pass my classes. My parents will stay off my back. They won't really dig into what I'm doing outside of this. Right. That's kind of how I masked it all. Right. And I hate to, to put it that way, but I mean, it's, <laughs> that's real. It, right? just, it just is what it is. Um. So I mean, I was doing sports, I was doing my work, and then we started getting deeper in, into the music. Um the same group of guys from from middle school we just started taking a little bit more serious mm -hmm. um it got to the point to where we were i, I you can put it like touring like we, we were touring throughout texas mm -hmm. i mean we we're doing shows houston dallas austin mm -hmm. and like you name it like we, we were actually making moves right um and then it, like it, it was kind of bad because i mean i'd show up to school with the clothes i had on the night before smelling like alcohol from oh. partying and all of that stuff um so, I mean, that progressed out, like once I graduated, like we were still doing it, things started getting a little bit more serious, started getting a little more deeper into doing the wrong things and right. the wrong people. Um, what's up? Yeah, I was gonna say, but did, did it feel like you were going somewhere, like you were moving, like, and, like yeah. you were growing, like, man, this is happening? Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, yeah. I was like, like we're making it, like, yeah. we're almost there. <laughs> like it's, it's about to happen any moment now, right. it's gonna take off. Um, but sort of like like any any other music group i mean we were doing it four or five years six years something like that um for the most part any music group you end up breaking up behind women and money mm -hmm. and that's pretty much exactly was our demise was women and money mm -hmm. um so i stopped doing music and then i um started getting a little bit more deeper into the bad things in life mm -hmm. um but then it got to a point to where I had, I had experienced so much and I, I witnessed so much. And it was kind of like, at what point, or after seeing all of these signs and ignoring them, it's like, at what point am I gonna be that sign for somebody? Like, mm -hmm. man, Darren was just here and da 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 da, whatever. And now I need to change my life. Yeah. Cause I mean, I've seen all of this prior. I mean, I've seen all of this in my right. life. So I was like, it finally clicked like i don't want to be that example for somebody i don't want somebody to tell that story about me like man he was here and now he's not and now i need to change my life yeah right? yeah like the, the guy with so much talent <laughs> could have been somebody yeah. great and and you didn't want that story to be written about you. you 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 wanted to change that narrative right exactly and that was a big thing it's like now i need to take a step back from all this and get my life under control mm -hmm. because now i'm 21 ish 2021 20, somewhere in there mm -hmm. um and, and now like it's all on me now like i can't depend on my parents anymore i can't depend on this dream that may never take off like mm -hmm. i need to start making my own money and doing the right things right um so that leads into my first job first job at 21 22. Most people have their first jobs at 15, 16. So I'm way behind. So uh and you got you got <laughs> hey, you got street street experience, right? Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. You went through the school of hard knocks uh, Absolutely. up front. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, I'm I'm not that I'm proud of of that, but I mean I, I learned a lot and a lot of those things I learned like apply to today right. in a sense. I mean, just in a different form, but it's all the same things at the end of the day. But anyways um like i said first job at 21 22 believe it or not i was a waiter at a mexican restaurant there you go uh, imagine <laughs> me the only black guy you look and mexican not to, <laughs> and not to bring race into it but yeah it just i just didn't fit you yeah. know what i mean but i mean i made it work i worked there for two years um and then kind of and that's what led me into the usaa thing it's like okay well now i'm 21 22 now i'm about 24. yeah i was like i'll be 30 any any moment yeah. it's like i can't make 
this two dollars an hour being a waiter like i need to figure something that's else crazy out. right two dollars an yeah. hour and then it's like oh you get tips so <laughs> like i guess that's all right <laughs> yeah and i mean that was that was the whole thing it's like i'll work monday through friday i'll make my cash mm -hmm. but it was more so the cash to go out that for the weekend right, and right. survive for the weekend and party for the weekend mm -hmm. and then monday come back around same thing let me get my cash for the weekend so it was just a, a never-ending cycle mm -hmm. um and so I was like, yeah, it's time for me to grow up now. Like I need to figure my life out. Mm -hmm. So then that's what led me. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll find a corporate job. I mean, I have no no college background. Right. So I was like, I know I have to start at the very bottom and I'll work my way up. Mm -hmm. So and then that's what led me into USAA. Everybody, I mean, it's being in San Antonio, everybody knows who USAA is. Mm -hmm. It's a big company. People start at the bottom, get to the top, takes time, whatever. So I was like, that, that's my plan. Yeah, you can make you can make a salary that's decent. Yeah. You know, you can su survive off of it, have a little bit of freedom. Yeah. Um, but it's it's safe, right? It's, it's secure. safe. It's <clears throat> secure. Um, so yeah, kind of what we touched on in the beginning, worked there five years, management thing didn't work out. I need to figure something else out. Yeah. Um, and so my sister, like as I'm having those thoughts in my head, my sister started getting, started working on her real estate courses. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me see what this is about. Started doing my own little homework. I was like, oh, maybe this is it. Yeah. Maybe like I'll do this and I'll figure it out. And then I was like, not only that, it's like she she would have been doing it for a few more months or a few months earlier than I have. So now I have somebody to lean on and right. get the the guidance or the the training or yeah. whatever it she is. Kind of pays the way, right? Exactly. And I was like, man, we can be a team, you know, like a little corny business card back to back. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, I did that. It took me a little while. Finally got licensed. Um, I tried working both jobs at the same time. Yeah. And that was it's tough. It was tough. Yeah. I learned. I learned that's not the way this works. Um, with real, I mean, with anything, because I mean, in the beginning, I didn't necessarily look at it as I'm starting a business. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm thinking, this is just I have this like this is my job mentality. Like right. I can put a little bit in and it'll come. Mm -hmm. But no, like it's it's starting a business. Like mm -hmm. you have to give it a hundred percent of your time and, and dedication and all of that. Um, and so it got to a point. So I did it for about four months trying to do real estate and work at USAA. Mm -hmm. So it got to a point to where it's like, I need to figure something out because mm -hmm. this, this isn't going to work. It's like, do I stay the safe route or do I bet on myself and make the leap and make the leap? Yeah, it was it was a struggle. It was a challenge internally. I mean, I never really talked to anybody about it, right. um, even though I probably should have. But I was like, this is my life. Like, I, I need to figure this out. I can't yeah. ask for guidance yeah well so what was the biggest challenge with uh, making that decision making that commitment you know man i mean it's just like do i it's just that 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 safety like right. i stayed at usaa for the safety for that guaranteed check every two weeks um versus leaping in i don't know when i'm gonna get paid so it was it was a scary thing yeah. um but i was like you know what I have to figure this out. So, <laughs> so I um, I quit USAA and I never looked back. Yeah, you let um, go. I let go. I was like, this is something I'm going to dedicate to. I, I have to go all in. You can't be one foot in, one foot out. Right. And that's with anything in life. Yeah, 100% um, concentration, right? Effort, everything, your focus, your time. I mean, the more time you put into it, yep. and it's in anything that you do in life, you know, you're going to get more out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, did that. Quit USA. Thankfully, I was I was living with my sister at the mm -hmm. time, so I didn't really have any overhead, any expenses mm -hmm. per se in, in life. Paid her a little bit of rent, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I continued on in the real estate journey. Went broke. Yeah. Totally. I think I think when I quit USAA, I think I had like two thousand bucks <laughs> saved up. Hey, that goes fast, <laughs> man. So <clears throat> in my eyes. That was a lot of money. I was like, oh, I can survive for at least five, six months off of this. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, I'm getting I'm getting home cooked meals every day. Right. I pay her a little bit of rent. I don't have a car payment. I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. Like, I got this. Like, I'll nah. figure it out. <laughs> that, couple <Not> really. <laughs> that couple of grand was gone in like two months. Yeah. Um, man, so I'm surprised you stretched it that far, man. That's that's pretty that's pretty strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So I mean it. There was a lot of dark times, 
financially because I mean now I have no money. Mm -hmm. There's there's moments where I couldn't pay her the rent. There's moments I had to borrow money from my dad mm -hmm. to pay her and then to survive at the same time. Yeah. Um but it ended up panning out. Yeah. So I mean I I did a couple of transactions enough to get me by. But then like I knew that what I'm doing and maybe it's because I, I came into it being naive. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I was expecting. Right. I was like man the real estate maybe just wasn't the move for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe this just isn't it. And a little doubt tries to creep in, right? Exactly. Especially when you meet some some adversity, some struggle. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I mean, I, I was very, very on the edge of just saying, F this, like I need to go back to finding a regular job mm -hmm. and just be comfortable and I'll be set. Um, so kind of a backstory is that, I mean, your wife has been in our family yeah. since I can remember. So naturally, once you guys started dating, you started coming around or whatever. Um, I knew you were in real estate, didn't really knew what you do, but every time I see you, you probably had like a new car. <laughs> you're, you're, you're started dressing better. Yeah, we had I, to make some moves. <laughs> I, I see you on social media, you know, doing your thing or whatever. So I was like, maybe I need to ask him like, what am I doing wrong? Like, show me the way, like help me out. Um, and so we had a brief conversation one day and you were like, if you don't like the brokerage that you're with right now, this is what we do. Come interview, I can get you an interview. Um, the rest is up to you, which I mean, I get that. I have no no issues with that there yeah. because I mean, it's, it's all on me at the end of the day. I, 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 I wouldn't necessarily want anybody to vouch for me or stick their neck out for me. Like I have to find my own way. So I got the interview took a little while to get on the team but once i got on the team it's like i never looked back mm -hmm. i was like this is perfect like this is what i need i'm around i'm around a, a solid team of people that make a lot of money um they're all motivated everybody likes to have fun everybody's young um the bond i guess i could tell it was like a family thing here so i was like i'm in like i'm sold yeah um sold my first house within probably two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, oh yeah, like this is it. Yeah, it's like, starting to click. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to click. So then yeah. from there, it's like I um, started going on a run. Yeah. yeah. Um, figure, it took me a while to, to, to figure out exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for me, I'm a, a, I like to know every aspect of what I do. Like, mm -hmm. so that's why it takes me a little bit of time to get off the ground per se. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I, I wanna master it. Like I, I wanna know the ins and outs and how it all works. Right. So once I figured it all out, there's no looking back. Yeah, yeah. You know? And well, and, and I think, you know, for me, you know, presenting opportunity is is something that shouldn't be sugarcoated. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, man, adversity is necessary for success. You know, we gotta go through the grind. We gotta go through the struggle and commitment is also necessary. So when you start to combine, you know, those two experiences and you start to go and find something that you love to do mm -hmm. and you can commit to it a hundred percent, then dude, <laughs> you don't have to look back. Like, yeah. you know, like it just starts, it starts to make sense. And you put yourself in that environment mm -hmm. with people that are doing the work and, you know, you have your inspiration around you, right? You, oh, that person did what? He made how much in a month? Mm -hmm. I could do that. If they did that, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the way you got to take it, right? Absolutely. So, um, I mean, so, I mean, outside of, of the real estate being at, at New Western or whatever, um, I was never big on reading. I was yeah, never, yeah. I was never big on working out after high school. Well, I mean, I, I would work out, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like a part of my daily life. Um, so once I came here, I started seeing like, like these people, I like, actually read books. Like this is it's foreign to me. Like yeah, I, I hated reading. You need to, you need to learn something new. I right? was like, <laughs> I, I know everything. I need. like, there's nothing a book can teach me. I always had a negative mm -hmm. outlook on reading. I was like, yeah, like it's, it's stupid. Like it's not now at this point. I mean, from then till, till now, it's like, I, I try to, well, nowadays it's kind of slowed down a little bit but like once i came on it's like now now i'm reading a new book every month like now i i, I see that i need to continue educating myself because i don't know it all right at all by any means what's uh what's one of the books that 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 you've read that um, made the made a big impact on your on your man there's a lot i mean there's the the celestine prophecy there's the um what is the, the Dale Carnegie, the uh, think, think Your Way to Wealth. And oh, then, that, uh, yeah, Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill, yeah, excuse yeah. me. Think Your Way to Wealth. And that's, then, that's a good one, man. That's one of, that's my foundational <laughs> books right there. I love that one. That's a solid, I mean, I can continue on and on. There's just a lot of solid books out there. So I, I advise you guys listening. I mean, 
never shy away from a book. I mean, there's just so mm. much knowledge in, in those, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, changes your mindset, changes your outlook, all of those things. And it's important to, um, you know, I know when I would get into reading books and, you know, after college for me, it's like, how else do I keep learning and growing? And mm-hmm. then it's like, man, well, you need, a, you need to read. You need to find a book that you can apply, mm-hmm. right? That you can learn and apply. And so, you know, you go and you see what are other people doing and reading, and then you start to, you know, do your own research. Yeah. And you find the ones that you're like, oh, this one, I might be able to use the information in this book to make me a little bit better, make me a little bit sharper, add a little bit more value to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's important, right? Because if you're not exercising your brain, as well then man then what's happening yeah you're, you're, you're not growing at all you're, you're being stagnant um but then on top of that also um we used to do uh, and we still do um a lot of the fitness competitions mm-hmm. um where we get points for working out or whatever um and i remember telling you like because you you came into the office one day and you're like yeah i went on like a 10 mile run this morning i was like you're stupid <laughs> like, <laughs> i was like who, who wakes up and just wants to do that like that's so dumb like I'm, i'll never do that in my yeah. life like past it's funny yeah but now today i run at least 50 60 miles a month like, right and i feel just so not me if i if i don't do these things it's like it's important like it, it's good for for your mental it's good to just be active it's good for your health like just the longevity of your life like all of those things right working out is is a crucial part of my life like i work out i, I try to work out at least two times or well, i try to work out twice a day mm-hmm. but uh every day I, I don't miss a day with, without or i don't miss a day without working out mm-hmm. because it's just so vital yeah it's, it's so key um but i feel as if if I, if I wasn't here if i wasn't around you and, and these guys here it's like i wouldn't wouldn't even think that way yeah it's hard to put value on it right because these are things that are external outside right and a lot of times in, in business or whenever you're working a lot of times people get caught up in just making the money and mm-hmm. just success and mm-hmm. um but success is is something that's beyond just your work work it's it's what are you doing outside yeah and that has even a greater impact on your your growth right mm-hmm. i mean we're not perfect but these are exercises that help us stay on the path to keep improving ourselves yep. and you know exercising the mind the yep. body the soul like all of those things are, yep. are important but they're not really talked about much um it's easy to come in learn the business learn how to you know shake mm-hmm. a hand get a contract signed and yeah. <laughs> you know show show the product right i mean yeah. it's you know it's, it's a rep- uh, reputable process but at the end of the day you know that work that you have to put in mm-hmm. on yourself yeah, that's where the challenge comes in, you know. And so, so what? What got you to want to wake up? Like, what really <laughs> said? You know what? This isn't stupid. Like, how, yeah. you know, he, maybe there's something to this. <laughs> nah, so, I mean, for one, of course, I wanted to win the competitions. I was like, this is the key. Like, I, I can't just shy away from this part of it. Like, I have to start working out. Like, yeah. I have to start doing these things. I have to get uncomfortable. I have to step outside of my normal. Yeah. Um, so that was the number one driver. Is like. I need, I want to win. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be in last place anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be at least at the very, very least. And not that it's good to settle. Mm-hmm. I want to be in the top three. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I want to win. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one thing. But then I started, over time, I realized it comes down to your habits. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have a lot of, you can, you can be good at your job and have a lot of bad habits. Or you can be good at whatever aspect of, of your life. Right. But then once you have all of those bad habits, it's going to lead you down a dark place to a dark place for the most part um so i realized like having good habits is the best thing you can do and that's a good habit working out reading um and amongst a lot of other things um but that was the biggest takeaway from all of this is your habits Mm -hmm. your habits determine a lot in your life yeah that is man so true and um you know habits uh they're, they're tough to understand but when you understand that you know what all you're doing is replacing old ones with new ones mm-hmm. and and that's shaping your life and shaping you as a person mm-hmm. then you start to think about well what are my habits yeah what are the ones that can be replaced with something else or something better mm-hmm. uh reading exercising two two great things to do you know and uh beyond that you know giving the time to you know your your relationships and stuff like that are also uh habits and yeah. stuff that you can form so you know as we progress and go and, and do more business you know it's it's all based off of habits it's all habits and we become who we are because <laughs> of our habits yeah yeah absolutely and who we're becoming tomorrow <laughs> 
based off of habits. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, so how do you get? So like you know you get you, you know you get into real estate, you move on, you, mm-hmm. and you keep growing, um, make making some money. Yep. And, you know what? Well, so by making that leap for you, looking looking back and seeing where you're at now, what has been that impact of your life? And, you know, as far as your own independence and freedom, you know, what does that look like now today for you? Are you happy where you're at? Are you happy where you're going? <laughs> Man, I, I never thought that I would be at the level that I am now. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not the richest man in, in the world or anything right. like that. But kind of to, to kind of give a mindset that, that I used to have. Mm-hmm. So, I think um, it's going to be fun, like a funny thing, mm-hmm. but it, I mean, it's just the reality of it. Right. So it's like growing, well, not necessarily growing up, but like once this probably this what Lock, Lock and Terra Mall came up, what, 2010, 11, somewhere around there, whatever. So I, I would like once that came up, mm-hmm. my mindset was I'm not good enough for Lock and Terra Mall. Like mm-hmm. I have to stick to Ingram Mall because that's mm-hmm. the only place I'm going to be accepted. That's it. That's that's all there is. Like I can't go there because I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get judged or I'm gonna be looked at funny or right. all. Like it's so so stupid and just so so like those thoughts that I had. Yeah. In my so you head. were thinking about the boundaries of yeah, of like, the segregation. Man, of was, rich and and poor. Right? Rich and poor. Exactly. I was like, I, I can't go anywhere off lights and like I don't belong there. I don't mm-hmm. deserve to be there. Now it's like. I'm ex- I feel like I feel so much better about myself and not because of the money, but just because of the level up and because of my mindset shifted. And I, mm-hmm. I took those boundaries that I put on myself. I took them off like yeah. I deserve to be anywhere. Yes, sir. like all of those things. So it's like nowadays it's like it's like this life is just so normal to me now. Mm-hmm. Um, um what was i gonna say so yeah so now you have freedom right yeah now you you, you don't have to live with your man, sister anymore now you know? i don't have to live with my sister <laughs> I, I bought me and my girl we just bought our, our first house um now i'm driving nice cars um all of those things and it's like it's 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 a lot of materialistic things mm-hmm. but i mean it's just i kind of i feel like it kind of just comes with it yeah you know? it's a representation it, of the things that you've yeah. been able to achieve, right? Exactly. Like now I, I feel like I deserve more. And now because I feel like I deserve more, now I want more. Now it makes me want to work harder for newer experiences, for better experiences. Right. To earn more. To earn more. Like, yeah, all of those. Like it just opens up so much more. And like the main thing is, is the mindset, the mindset shift. Because right. like I said, I put boundaries on myself. That's right. For no reason at all. And now those are completely gone. I wish somebody would tell me I can't do something. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> watch me. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So big thing, biggest thing is just the mindset shift. That's strong. And I think uh, you know, um, for most people that 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 come from poverty or, you know, come without things, you know, there are these boundaries that are put onto their their minds and sometimes it's put on by family and, mm-hmm. you know, friends that you grow up with and oh man, we're like that's for them. This is for us. Like we're, you know, we're meant to be here. They're meant to be there. Like, and that's totally not true. Yeah. You know, really we're limitless in what we can accomplish Mm -hmm. and anything is possible. If you really, really want it, you know, you can change your environment by making a decision and also having some faith and knowing that, man, if I do something different, that there's a chance and if it's positive and if it's good, there's a chance that, you know, this, this can be great. Absolutely. Right. And especially along, along the way, as like you said, you invest in yourself, you build your mind up, you build your body up, and now you have this habit of taking action. Mm-hmm. And we, now you're not waiting for somebody to come save you. Yeah. You know, you pull yeah. yourself up, you know, yep. you pull yourself up and, and you start moving in that direction. And yeah, you need support along the way. Mm-hmm. You know, we've all had support along the way. And I think that's, that's important, you know, but people will always back you up, especially from, you know, the bottom as you're making the climb, people will support you and help you along the way, as long as you do the things that you need to do. Right. To to show them that it was worth the support. They just want to see you. Investment, su- yeah. yeah, they they just want to see you succeed, right? Yeah, man. And that's pretty cool to see. So big. Um so with uh with all that experience and everything that you've done and, and accomplished <laughs> and, and I know you're you know you're still working. This is just the beginning <laughs> of a new level, right? Yes, yes, sir. Um, you know, what what is uh you know, what's the one tip, the one tip you wanna give to to little Darren out there, you know, <laughs> what's that, that can make it that make a difference and, and help them uh, yeah. level up. Um I mean, like I said in the very beginning, you gotta bet on yourself. 
like you have to that's just what it is it's like i if i if i didn't take that chance of leaving usaa to go to a a, a job where everything depended on me i wouldn't be where i'm sitting today right i'd probably still be there making 30 40 grand a year and, mm -hmm. it, and it's not all it's not always about it's not about the money per mm -hmm. se but it's just about believing in yourself like if you believe it like it's so such a generic um saying but like if you believe in if you believe you can achieve like it's mm -hmm. it's so real like yeah. i believed in myself and now i'm where i am today <laughs> awesome man simply put so love that bet love on that. yourself but bet on yourself believe in yourself yeah and keep growing man that's the key well darren man it's been a pleasure yeah. having you on the show today <laughs> man thank you man great stories thank you i hope you all found some value, took some notes. This guy dropped some gems. So yes, y'all take care. See you on the next one. All right. Thank you. Thanks, brother.